The Fed's two-day monetary policy meeting kicks off today. We want to bring in former Atlanta Fed President Dennis Lockhart. He is now a professor with the Sam Nunn School of International Affairs at Georgia Tech. And uh, Dennis, thank you for being here. I'm guessing you morning. think they're going to <clears throat> Good raise... morning, Becky. Good morning. I'm guessing you think they're going to raise rates today just, uh, just like uh, just about everybody else in the world, right? I do. Yeah, they. I, I think the, a number of a number of Fed speak voices advocated that, and at the same time, there was very little pushback on that idea. So I think they pretty much have to follow through with that today. You've been in the room before. Um, what are they going to be talking about today? What data points are they going to be looking, uh, checking out? What What are the considerations about whether they raise rates again? Well, I would expect that there is some discussion about what is the the real underlying rate of inflation. Uh, you know, inflation is is a month to month thing with lots of noise and and uh, and trying to discern exactly what the underlying pace of inflation is is not such an easy task. And so, I think they're going to be looking carefully at the inflation data. Because obviously inflation is cont continues to be their number one priority, and they have to figure out what they're dealing with exactly in in this last phase of rate increases. And if you were going to be voting or thinking about what to do next, what would your suggestion be? What would your voice at the table be, just in terms of how hawkish you are after this rate hike today? Well, I'll point out that <clears throat> the interval between this meeting and the September meeting is a little bit longer than normal. And so they get more information coming in, more data arrive in the next few weeks. So that, that gives them, I think, a, a, a bit more information than they normally would have between meetings uh, to really to figure out what they're going to be dealing with as the fall unfolds. So. Um, I, what I would be doing is saying, let's let's keep our cards close to our vests, uh, n uh, not indicate uh, a definite move in October, for example, or even September, uh, but uh, take the advantage of the coming weeks. I, I'd also point out that Jay Powell normally speaks at Jackson Hole, and I think that gives him an an opportunity to. Uh, really explain the reaction function of the committee in the final phase. You do think, though, that a second second hike seems likely, at least at this point, right? I do. You know, there was discussion around the June uh, meeting of, of uh, whether they could substitute, effectively substitute, bank turbulence and credit tightening for another rate hike. The bank turbulence seems to have calmed down. There's news this morning. Um, of another merger that t takes a weak bank off the table. And uh, so I, uh, with that not in, apparently, at least not in play, I, I think the, their attitude will be uh, at least one more rate hike is required. We've been watching the markets so closely. The Dow up now 12 sessions in a row. It seems like this melt up that we're kind of watching with the markets. How big of a concern is that for the Fed, just in terms of additional stimulus or the wealth effect or people just feeling better about things and maybe spending more as a result? Uh, certainly, it's plausible that the strong equity markets are feeding a fairly upbeat consumer sentiment um, and that uh, consumer demand is being strengthened by people observing their wealth improving. <clears throat> so I, I I think it's a factor in looking at financial conditions. The Fed looks at that question a little differently, I think, than perhaps uh, Wall Street does, because the equity component is less important. It's interest rates that I think matter to the Fed in terms of overall the overall position of financial conditions. Well, the if you look at the Treasury market, the Treasury market doesn't seem to believe that the Fed is really going to keep rates higher for longer. Do you? I do. I, <clears throat> I'm in the higher for longer camp, partly because I think it will take uh, very convincing data, which is a series of, of consistent reports, inflation reports, to uh, convince the Fed that they are going to achieve their 2% target. Um, and also, there's just sort of a a natural um, 
how should I put it, a natural lagging effect in terms of policy, because it just takes a while for all that evidence to accumulate. What if there's another round of turbulence in the banking sector? Would that change your mind, or if there's some big default when it comes to uh, real estate, corporate real estate? Well, anything the anything the uh, the policymakers say about policy is conditional, and uh, you know you have to start with assumptions of of continuing stability. But if they have another bout of financial turbulence, financial system or banking system turbulence. Um, I, it certainly is going to factor in and perhaps be a, a, a cautionary point as they formulate policy in the coming months.